Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan and today we're going to be taking a look at another mini PC. I've reviewed plenty of different mini PCs in the past and all of them usually sport pretty similar specs and features and it makes it a little bit difficult to recommend one over the other. But today we're going to be taking a look at this Minix unit right here and I really think that there was a lot of attention to detail taken when designing this little mini PC and it really stands apart from a lot of the other cheaper options on the market. Now, the Minix Elite EU715 AI is not the most attractive model name on the market right now, and I'm probably not going to be repeating that for the rest of the video, but I've reviewed one other Minix unit in the past, and I really feel like this is an up-and-coming company that's going to be competing with the big players in the market, like Minis Forum. And that's because I feel like for the price and the design, Minix is offering some of the best mini PCs that you can buy right now. And I really think that this model right here is just a really good example of everything done right when designing a mini PC. Now inside the box, there's not really any surprises here. You get the mini PC itself along with a VESA mount and all the cables that you need like a USB-C power adapter and cord, as well as an HDMI cable and a couple of other screws for getting everything put together. And something that I really want to emphasize here is that USB-C power adapter. And on the surface, it really just looks like any old USB-C phone charger. But reading the label, this is actually a 100 watt USB-C power delivery charger. And what's really exciting about that is that it won't fry your other devices if you plug something else into it that's not this mini PC. And I feel like I need to mention this because for whatever reason, most of the other mini PC devices we've tested that use USB-C have shipped with power adapters that are not actually USB-C power delivery compliant. And what that means is that usually they just output 20 volts on USB-C no matter what you plug into them. There's no communication between the device and the charger about what voltage should be sent. And this means that if you plug a bad charger into your phone, it might explode. So seeing that Minix actually put in the work to include a power adapter that's safe for other devices, isn't something that I should be praising them for, but unfortunately in this market, cutting corners is pretty common. So I'm going to have to say I'm really impressed that they at least went this far. Now the mini PC itself is actually a really nice little unit. The whole thing is aluminum except for the top panel here, which is plastic to provide ventilation for the CPU. And it has some really solid IO. We see that DC in USB-C port along with a 20 gigabit USB-C port, HDMI, display port, a 10 gigabit USB 3 port, and dual two and a half gigabit ethernet ports, which is gonna be really good if you wanna be hosting stuff on the network. My unit here came with a one terabyte Kingston SSD and 32 gigabytes of Samsung DDR5, which is really good to see name brand components in a PC like this. And I feel like it means they wanna be taken more seriously than all of the really cheap mini PC manufacturers on the market right now. The cooling solution is also pretty big for what I would consider to be a very low powered efficient 28 watt laptop CPU. This is the Core 7 Ultra 155H which is pretty respectable here in 2025. It's not the craziest CPU that you can get right now but I really feel like it fits a compact and cool little mini PC like this. Once all that was done I went ahead and plugged in my monitor, power, keyboard and mouse and got booted into the included Windows 11 installation and as is my usual disclaimer here. I don't know where this Windows installation came from. It does have a Windows 11 sticker on the bottom there, which would seem to indicate there's some level of credibility. I don't know if it's a legitimate installation. I really hope it is. But even if you buy your computer from a big name like Dell or HP, you should really just clean format the drive and put a Windows installation on there straight from Microsoft with a regular Windows installation media. Or past that, you can even install Linux. And that's what I did for the majority of this review. I did verify that Fedora 43 works perfectly on this hardware. The Wi-Fi card, all the sleep settings and everything work perfectly with this mini PC. So I'm happy to call it a Linux compatible PC. And in Fedora, I did my regular set of benchmarks to see how this PC actually compared to other Core 7 Ultra 155Hs on the market. And I was pretty impressed after running 10 iterations of the Passmark CPU bench benchmark. And in this benchmark, I got a multi-core score of about 30,000, which is actually better than the average for the CPU on Passmark's database. 
but for the single threaded test, I only got 3000, which is actually about 400 points lower than the average single core performance. Now with that said, during the course of the benchmark, it did get pretty toasty and the highest core temperature that I saw was about 96 degrees Celsius. And at that time, the fan was spinning pretty fast. Thankfully, they chose a decently big fan and heatsink here. It's definitely not as annoying as some laptops or other mini PCs that I've tested, but if you're really sensitive to noise, you may want to look into an even lower power option. Minix actually makes a silent mini PC, which I tested earlier on this channel, and I even ended up using that as my main PC for a little while because I was really interested in the idea of a completely silent mini PC. That was the Z300-0DB, and I really liked that computer. So you can definitely look at your different options if this isn't quite the right solution for whatever you need. But I will say that the CPU in here is pretty darn good. And generally, I feel like Minix has built a really solid little mini PC here. And I hope that they continue bringing out more hardware on this kind of a platform. So I think that's about it for this video. If you thought it was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.